What's going on everyone? My name is Alex Nicola here with uh, the Nicola Group at Realty Executives at our office in downtown Crown Point. Uh, today I'm bringing you guys our first podcast uh, podcast episode. We're going to be uh, meeting with awesome people from around the region who've done incredible things in all different walks of life. And today is uh, the first and an awesome guest. Uh, today we have Spike Albrecht here. Spike, thanks for coming. Man. Absolutely. Appreciate you, man. Thanks Absolutely. For having me. So Spike, um, I had the privilege of playing basketball with Spike um, growing up, and I'm sure all of you uh, know Spike and what he's been able to accomplish. Um, but uh, for me, this is super cool because Spike has been a personal influence and mentor, and um, dude, you've always been completely changed my life growing up. And so being someone to, to yeah, man, to follow and um, be someone to to. You know, I had the opportunity to work out with you and to mm -hmm. learn from you and to chase you around for two years yeah. and uh, learn learn the game of basketball from you, man. So I'm excited. To, thanks for coming. Yeah, thanks um, for having me. Yeah, so just kind of want to go over, you know, your story and uh, and get a feel for what you were able to, how you were able to do what you've done. Um, so where did it all start for you? Where did it all begin? <laughs> yeah, um, you know, I developed a, a love for the game from a very early age. Um, you know, I think my dad put a basketball in my hands probably when I was like three years old. Um, obviously, yeah. you know I have two older brothers, mm -hmm. so growing up um, as one of, one of the younger siblings, um, you know, always trying to to fight your way onto the court or, or whatever it may be. Um, but growing up playing against them and their friends and always being, you know, the youngest or the smallest, um, I kind of developed that competitiveness and that that chip on my shoulder that I pretty much carried with me throughout my basketball career. And it was day one, like yeah. from the time you were born, like no basketball, yeah. 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 And that's because basketball. Just basically wants to your family, right? I mean, your yeah. dad. Your dad was, you know, we talked about this before, but your dad has always been kind of a, mm -hmm. I say a legend, just because we've yeah. been told that, and <laughs> like you said, self-proclaimed. Yeah, self-proclaimed for sure. <laughs> but a lot of people I talk to, you know, I know they talk about how good your dad was, and uh, so I'm sure that it just all started from the beginning, right away. You were yeah. playing ball, and your whole family was playing ball. Yeah. No. Yeah. Um, my dad definitely. I mean, he was he was a very good player growing yeah. up. You know, he he grew up in Gary. Um, played at Lou Wallace, played in college, um, but our family, you know, I, I felt like I had a great childhood gr uh, growing up, yeah. you know, wouldn't have known if I had more or less money than the next kid or the next family, um, but I know one thing my dad and my parents, they did a really good job of was, you know, keeping us active, keeping us yeah. outside, playing games, playing basketball, whatever it was, right. um, you know, I wasn't someone who, who came home and played video games for, for four or five hours a night, yeah. you know, I was outside with my brothers, we were playing basketball, baseball, football, whatever it was. All the time. Um, but that that's just what we did yeah so uh, one thing we could touch on which a lot of people know but the nickname came yeah. your, came from baseball spikes yes yeah so what you just always like what yeah. was the story on it? yeah so obviously basketball you know is what I continue to do throughout yeah. high school and college but my first love was baseball yeah um, you know I was I I think I was a pretty good baseball player <laughs> I don't know if I was as good as you know baseball as I was at basketball yeah. but um, when I got my first pair of baseball spikes man for like my fifth birthday um, I thought I was the shit. Like, I thought that was the coolest <laughs> thing ever. I was like, I was five years old. I got some spice. I wore them everywhere. Yeah. Like, I wore them to school at St. Mary's. I wore them to church. I wore them out to eat. Yeah. Around the Little League field, obviously. And then yeah. people just started calling me Spike. Yeah. And that's where it so came I'm from. Stuck, man. 26 years old. People still call me Spike. <laughs> so. so from when sports started, like when you were young, were you always one of the standouts, or did like what? How did that? Like when you were younger, how were you compared to everybody else? Um, you know, I'm not. Not trying to like not at all. boast, but I would definitely say for my age group, yeah. you know, I was definitely one of the better ones cool. in, in, you know, baseball. And that comes from playing all Absolutely. the time. Absolutely. Like man. if you weren't, you weren't inside playing video games, yeah. you were playing sports, no. you were active. For sure, and, for sure. Uh, yeah, and with it being, you know, within the family, yeah, 100%, mm -hmm. that's where all your time was. Absolutely. Well, in that plus, you know, I was playing against my brother Steve, who was three yeah. years older than me, and then mm -hmm. my brother Chachi, who's six. Yep. So I'm playing against kids four or five years older than me. Yeah. You know, so then when I'm playing against kids my ages, I'm like, oh yeah. well, shit, this is easy. Like right. I've been playing against kids who are way bigger and stronger right. than me. So, so going into that 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 side of it, because I grew up with older older yeah. siblings too, and so, um, but and so I was always extremely competitive with them. Mm -hmm. Like I want, dude, I wanted to beat them so bad. Yeah. And uh, so, how competitive like was the family? Like when you guys would play like in the driveway, like oh, what crazy. was it real? Like crazy. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, no, for sure. I mean, there's been times, you know, I know my brother one time I caught him playing defense on him, Steve. I he turned and I hit him right, you know, with, I don't even know what the hell this is, but right in the face and, yeah. you know, he ended up with like 12 stitches in the oh. hospital. My dad would actually make us wear mouth guards when we were out in, out in the driveway playing, you know, That's playing one-on-one, awesome. -on -one, whatever it was. Do you think that helped your career? 
like oh, have, for yeah. sure for sure um just and it kind of goes back to the fact that you know i was always one of the smaller guys overlooked mm -hmm. underrated mm -hmm. um but that wasn't anything new to me you right. know because i grew up and i remember more than anything i just wanted to, to be around my brothers and play with them yeah but like you know how it is you're your younger mm -hmm. brother it's like oh dude like spike get the hell out of here yeah but, yeah like i kind of used basketball up. as like an avenue because i was like no like hey they need a fourth guy yep. for two on two, and I'm good enough to play. So then they started inviting me and bringing me around. When was that? Like, when was that time? What age were you? Shoot, that was, I was probably like eight or nine, so yep. like third or fourth okay. grade. And, yep. Um, first time you beat Chachi? First time I beat Chach. Um, she, and Chach Chachi's all right for those of you guys who don't know. <laughs> um, but, uh, shoot, I'd probably say like freshman, sophomore year. Okay. You know, but that, by that time, he was already in college. Okay. Um, All right. so, he's, so he was not happy. He probably spent a little too many nights at Kilroy's. <laughs> he went to IU, so he and came the, back. And Steve? Me and Steve had battles. Um, yeah. Now, he was a senior when I was a freshman. We were three years apart. Um, and at that time, Steve was the man. Steve was a senior. Yeah, I, I, remember, I remember going and watching Steve play Scott Martin and Robbie Hummel. Yeah. And I remember that game at home. And that play, first off, the gym was packed. And Nuts. Steve went off. And it was just the coolest thing to see. So Steve was a yeah. real ball player. So no, Steve was a real deal for sure. Not to discard you, Chach. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Chach. Sorry. He knows. He knows. Um, but no, that's Steve for sure. Like he was, he was a stud in high school, and unfortunately, he had some some back injuries. You know, I would have loved to see what his career would have right. been like had that not happened. Um, but watching him in high school, that's when I really started to like develop the love and commitment. Mm -hmm. Because I was at AAU tournaments, like you were just saying, right. and I was seeing guys like him and Robbie Hall and mm -hmm. Scott Martin, and they were starting to draw a ton of Division One interest. Mm -hmm. College it doesn't have to be Division One, but just college mm -hmm. basketball interest in general. And that's when I was like, man, this is awesome. Like yeah. this is what I want to do. Yeah. So yeah, man. So going from you know when you got into high school, mm -hmm. um, from the time that you were in high school, did you know at that point that one, did you is that what, was that your goal to go to the next level? And two, did you know that you could? Like, did you believe that you could at that point in high school? Yeah, I, uh, you know, I always had you know, aspirations of playing mm -hmm. in college yeah. and playing at the next level, um, but, you know, I'm, I'm not going to say that I knew mm -hmm. that I would end up at Michigan and Purdue and, right. you know, I would make it to that level. Yeah. Um, I always had that confidence in myself and, and that belief, and more importantly, I, I always had that dream that I could do it, right. um, so I wasn't, I wasn't necessarily surprised, but I'm, you know, I wouldn't say that I knew for sure it happened, because, yeah. you know, yeah, I don't speak in absolutes. For sure. Yeah, absolutely. You know. And then going into um, going into like you know your your junior senior year, mm -hmm. uh, let's call it your senior year. At that point, um, you know, where what led you to go to prep school? Because at this point, man, I mean, you know, watching you junior senior year was like it was the coolest thing. And to be involved with that and to see the way that you work the court. I mean, my favorite thing about you, Spike, is your your knowledge of the game. You use your like your knowledge of the game and your smarts to to beat everybody and yeah. to watch that you know was some so fun and to learn mm -hmm. about the game that way because at this point I mean you weren't this size in high yeah. school you were smaller you were even smaller than this now mm -hmm. and so to, to use that against like um, what led you to to Northfield Mount Hermon and, and to take yeah. that route um, well like like I had said earlier you know I definitely knew I wanted to play at the next level right um, you know, and I'm not someone who gets caught up in, in D1, D2, any, like, mm -hmm. if you get a chance to go play college basketball or whatever the sport may be and get school paid for, that's awesome. Yeah. But for me, I definitely wanted to play Division One basketball, not because of the D1, D2, whatever, mm -hmm. it's because I knew I was good enough to play Division One. Yeah. So I wasn't going to sell myself short. Mm -hmm. um, and that year, my senior year, um, your sophomore year, right? Yep. So we had a we had a really good season yeah. um, as a team. I felt like I had a, a pretty good season individually, mm -hmm. um, but for whatever reason, you know, I just I wasn't drawing the attention that I thought I deserved yeah. from Division One schools. Yeah. Um, you know, I know I've mentioned this to you before. You know, I don't necessarily pass the eyeball test. Right. You know, not right. too many five eleven white guys. Yep. Um, yeah. But that's and it's understandable. For but, sure. Um, I knew prep school would be my best route if I wanted to pursue that dream. Mm -hmm. um, my brother was at Brown University at the time, um, and their coaches knew the coaches at Northfield Mount Hermon. They reached out to him and was like, hey, you need to take a look at you know, Steve's brother, Spike. Um, so I, I went out there with full intentions of going to Northfield Mount Hermon and then going to Brown. Yeah, and that was really, it, but Northfield Mount Hermon was really the, the change. Like yeah. that, was, that was a change to everything. Because at that point, you were playing the best 
the best prep school players in the country. 100%. Yeah. Um, you know, that, and I, I've told you this before, that was definitely the best basketball decision, you know, yeah. of my life. Mm -hmm. um, you know, everybody knows me from Michigan and Purdue and college, and those are obviously great times, great memories. But without Northfield Mount Hermon, none of that's possible. How was that level of ball compared to high school? Um, it was it was definitely, you know, another level. Uh, yeah, higher yeah. caliber players. Yeah. Just because you know, around here, and the region's awesome. I love yeah. region basketball. You know, and people who say this and that, I was like, no, like come come play in the region, and see what happens. Like especially yeah. some of those, you know, teams down south and yeah. things like that. We like we have some really good players here. Yeah. Um, but the difference is, like, teams here who are good have one, two, maybe three tops, like yeah. Division One players on a team. Out there, every team had seven to ten Division One players. Like, Northfield, Mount Hermon, my school, we had eight guys go Division One that year. That's awesome. Which is crazy absolutely bananas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then going from that, so now you got to play at a different level, and you mm -hmm. got the attention and the exposure. Yeah. Um, when did you first hear from Michigan and Beeline? So I heard from Coach of Beeline for the first time that spring. What was that after like? After the season. When you got that, was it a call? Actually, it's hilarious, yeah. <laughs> Great call. So, um, at the time, I was having a ton of success. Our team was killing. Like, yeah. we were having a ton of success. We had just beat the number one prep school in the country. Um, so all the free throws in the game that you, the free throws you hit in the game you played, boy from 20 something points. You gotta, you gotta yeah, make man. free throws, man. Um, but I still wasn't getting a ton of, a ton of looks, a ton of attention, whatever, whatever you call it. Um, and then at the time, Michigan, was playing in the NCAA tournament, their point guard, Trey Burke, those who don't know, Trey Burke was the national player of the year, my freshman year, his sophomore year. Um, but he was actually thinking about leaving and doing the one and done after freshman year, which was not expected. Michigan was surprised and would have been totally caught off guard had he, he had done that. that. So my AAU coach, who two of my teammates were Glenn Robinson and Mitch McGarry, yeah. obviously were already committed to Michigan at the time, my AAU coach reached out to Coach Beeline and was like, hey, I, I've got a guy. He doesn't really look like much, but like, if you need a point guard, this isn't a bad option. Um, so Coach Beeline, I remember him calling my prep school coach, and my prep school coach, who's an awesome dude, he gives me, he calls me, he's like, hey, he goes, I got an interesting call today. <laughs> he's like, Michigan called. And I was like, University of Michigan? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, he goes, yeah, I thought the same thing. And I was like, well, sure. Thanks, go, coach. Yeah, thanks, coach. And yeah. he's like, are you interested? And I was like, interested? I was like, next, next question, dude. Yeah. I was like, hell yeah, I'm interested. Um, so, you know, long story short, um, Coach Beeline and one of his assistants, they came out and watched me play in a game and then followed up, came and watched me in an open gym that mm -hmm. spring. And I just, I happened to be playing my best basketball at the right time. Right um, place, right time. They liked what they saw, brought me on campus. and. and there it goes. The rest is history. So from there, we'll go to uh, your your freshman year. You're playing yeah. on Trey Burke, mm -hmm. playing with Trey Burke. Uh, you know, filling, uh, kind of filling his yeah. minutes, and and you know the the NCAA Player of the Year mm -hmm. that year. Yeah. Um, what was it like playing? You know, with that Michigan team. It was awesome. Um, I mean, that team was crazy loaded. Yeah. You know, I remember coming in there as a as a 19 year old kid and. And really, that was the first time in the basketball world there was a little bit of a reality check yeah. because of just mm -hmm. the absolute talent on that team. You know, and that was the first time where I was like, shit, well, I how got many a long NBA way play to go. How many NBA players are on that team? Shoot. I think eight NBA players. <sighs> eight M eight players. NBA players. On one, one college team. team. One college team. That team was nasty. Stupid. We had six, I think we had like five or six first round draft picks. <laughs> which is, that is insane. Which is, yeah. Which is crazy. So going from, you go from, you know, region ball. You yeah. go to Northfield, Mount Hermon, playing some of the best prep school players, and mm -hmm. then you go to, I mean, now some great players within the NBA, yeah. and eight guys. Um, go to, fast forward to the national championship game. Yeah. Um, you know, when you had that opportunity, um, for you, what was that like? I mean, before we get, for me, it was, dude, it was crazy. It was, it was literally like what I've been watching my entire life. Like, that's all, it was normal. I remember hanging out with my friends, I'm like, this is normal. Like this is what Spike has always done. Like mm -hmm. this is—it wasn't weird to watch. It just happened to be happening on the biggest stage in NCAA in in that in you know in the basketball uh, yeah. college basketball. So what was it like for you? Like one, you know, I know you talked about Trey getting the fouls. Yeah. So when that happened, um, you know, you knew at that point you had to step up because yeah. Trey had two fouls, and you know, kind of touch on that and what mm -hmm. it was like for you. Yeah. Um. Like you just said, I knew when Trey got that second foul, I knew I was going to be in the rest of the half. But for me, I've always been a person who kind of like loved that opportunity and yeah. and loved the big moments and 
mm -hmm. you know, like to, to take advantage of it. For sure. Um, and not that in that moment by any means was it, I, was, I wasn't thinking about like, like me, 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 like, oh, this yep. is my time. You know, mm -hmm. I was just more thinking like, what can I do to help the team, mm -hmm. you know, and make sure that I do my part to keep us in this game or to do what I can. Um, you know, I can't say I, you know, I don't want to say I expected to do something like that. But you've done but it your whole life. I have. I don't <laughs> know, some, but, but no, for real. In a sense, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, so I went out there was completely, you know, confident in myself and my abilities. And what people don't realize is that that entire year, they were like, oh, yeah, Spike came in off the bench. You know, he averages two points a game. I can't right. believe he did this. But they don't realize I had been practicing, you know, with this team with seven NBA players. <laughs> I've been going against yeah. the best player in college basketball. Like, yep. not just the best point guard, literally the Trevor. The best player. He was, you know, consensus national player of the year. So, and I know I mentioned this to you before, but like my whole thought that entire year was like iron sharpens iron. Yep. I'm getting a chance to go against Trey every day. Mm -hmm. Like I'm gonna make him better, he's gonna make me better. Mm -hmm. Obviously he probably made me a lot better than yeah. I, I made him better, you know? <laughs> um, yeah. But like that was my, my mindset and my mentality that whole year. Um, so when I got a chance to, to, to prove myself and, and show what I can do, um, more than anything it was just, it was a very um, gratifying moment mm -hmm. for myself mm -hmm. to know that all the hard work was paying was off. paying off. Yeah, and on the biggest stage, which was awesome. It was just, mm -hmm. you know, the best way I could put it is that it was, I remember saying this over and over, I'm like, this is normal. Yeah. Like, we were watching it and we were all freaking out, but at the same time, I was like, guys, this is lit this is normal. Mm -hmm. So it was just cool to see yeah, that, man. No, so, awesome. um, now, uh, we'll go to, uh, real quick on your Purdue experience. How was mm -hmm. that? It was awesome. Yeah. It was awesome. Yeah. Um, you know, unfortunately, due to injuries, my, my Michigan career didn't mm -hmm. end the way I would have liked. Yeah. Um, but, you know, things happen. But it gave me an opportunity to go, you know, to, to play for another great university, you know, go get my master's and um, play for Coach Painter, who's an awesome dude. Mm -hmm. I met some really great people at Purdue. Um, you know, our team won another Big Ten championship. Yeah, that yeah, would be um, awesome. So, you know, personally, I didn't have the year I was hoping for, but... You know, when you had bilateral hip surgery, I could, I just yeah. couldn't get back to where I needed to be. Yeah. Um, but I wouldn't change it for the world. You know, yeah. I, shit, I was at Coach Painter's wedding a couple weeks ago, and yeah. you know, I still maintain relationships with, with the coaches and, and my former teammates there. So yeah. it was a awesome. Um, it was experience. a great experience yeah. for sure. Uh, so what would, uh, what do you, th what would you attribute to? Because for me, I'm a big mindset guy, yeah. and um, you know, the mindset as to how people achieve. You know what they've done. How how did you get this point? Before we go into mindset, how did you get this point? Like, what would you attribute your success to for you? Um, you know, I think first and foremost is it's just you know the hard work and and, and the time and the hours I put in, um, you know, to my craft to basketball and yeah. you know that can can go for anyone in in any field. You know, 100%. you as real estate or, or whatever it may be. Um, you know, you're like it's just inevitable. You have to put in the time. Yeah. Um, you know, along with that comes, and this was, I think, something that really separated myself, was the sacrifices I was willing to make. Um, you know, especially in high school. You know, yep. kids are out hanging out with their friends. You know, high school is all about like, hey, who's the most popular kid? Who's like, doing what? Yeah, who's yeah. doing what? what going out it? with friends, partying? Mm -hmm. Who knows? You know, staying up late, doing dumb stuff. Um, but and that you were willing to sacrifice that. Absolutely. That all. You know, that's all a distraction. Mm -hmm. You know, and. I'm not saying I, you know, I sat home and went to bed at nine o'clock every night by myself, mm -hmm. things like that. But, right. you know, I certainly, you know, I had early mornings and late nights, you know, in the gym. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I had countless tournaments on the weekends where, where other guys and other kids were doing, you know, fun stuff in the summer. Um, but I, I knew that ultimately that's what I needed to do in order to, to separate myself from the pack. And, yeah. um, you know, I felt like that was my, my best chance to make that happen. What mindset advice would you give to a young kid who's just like you that you know maybe isn't the tallest the fastest the strongest um what mindset advice would you give to that person who's trying to accomplish and, and achieve the success that you have um you know and i i say this all the time but i would say you know don't let someone you know tell you what you can or can't do or what you can or can't be um you know, there's a lot of people out there, and I know we've talked about this before, but there's a lot of people who want, who are like quick to hate on you, yeah. right? Like at Michigan, we would always say, um, you know, especially when you're under the microscope, you know, there's always quick, there's people who are quick to, to call you out and they want to put your negative shit in the, the headlines, mm -hmm. right? Um, so in that sense, for me, basketball, you know, my whole life people told me I was, you know, I was too small, yep. you know, wasn't quick enough, wasn't strong enough, athletic yep. enough, whatever it may be. 
Um, and all that stuff kind of just fueled me and, and motivated yeah. me to, to work harder and, and sure. to get better. Um, you know, so any kids out there, you know, who are, who are young and have big dreams, whether it's, it's sports, school, whatever it may be, you know, um, there's going to be people who are going to, you know, try to knock you down, you know, and they always have shit to say. Like, I'm sure yeah. you, you experience mm -hmm. it. hundred percent. You know, there's always people out there who, who have something to say. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, if people are talking about you, that's probably a good thing. hundred percent. And, and having that, you know, for, cause for me, I went through a non-conventional way of yeah. my business and leaving school was a big part of that. And when I left college, you know, I got a lot of that. Mm -hmm. And if, if you listen to what other people say, you can never hear yourself. It's infectious. And it, it's right. And you have, you have to be able to think. That was the first time I began to think for myself. Yeah. You have to think for yourself and realize that you everything boils down to belief yeah and having that belief in yourself is more important than what anybody else believes yeah. about you and ultimately it's your life right you know so why yeah. would I give a shit what other people yeah. have to say and tell yeah. me to do and one of my mentors used to you know he used to say you know why do you care so much about what people think mm -hmm. you know and what I found out is they don't yeah so who cares yeah. when you Absolutely. at the end of the day in the end of your life it's what you believe about you and and everything comes down to self-belief yeah. so that's awesome yeah. man. Uh, so uh, What's next for you? Are you going to are you going to do any sort of for kit? Are you going to do any sort of camps? Any sort? Do you have any aspirations yeah. of getting into basketball and, and you know providing back or? Yeah, I would love to. Yeah. Um, you know, right now I'm super busy. Right now I just started my new job. Mm -hmm. um, I know I've told you I'm doing biopharmaceutical sales, which is obviously a way different route than, than yeah. basketball, but it's it's a good new challenge for me. I'm excited. Mm -hmm. um, I'm new to the industry, just getting started, but I still love basketball and would yeah. love to stay connected in some way. Um, you know, whether it's it's here in Crown Point, you know, at the high school or if it's running, you know, camps or clinics, um, once I get a little more settled in and, and get some time, I would I would love to do some things, you know, on the weeknights or weekends cool. for, for local kids and, you know, get my basketball fix in. That's somehow. awesome. So, awesome. Well, thanks for coming Absolutely, out, I really appreciate Definitely. it. Always. Absolutely. Uh, well, thank you guys for watching. Uh, this is Spike Albrecht. Thank you guys for tuning into the first podcast here. Hope you guys enjoyed this um, and stay tuned for more. Thanks.